Welcome back. Well, I don't use SPF every day. Does that surprise you? Maybe I've raised a few eyebrows here already because it kind of goes against the grain, doesn't it, of most beauty advice that we hear to slap on the Factor 50 every day. Well, before we get into this, and just because there is so much to discuss on this topic, I do want to make myself super clear. I am absolutely not saying that I never wear SPF. I do. I wear it in bright, strong, middle of the day sunshine, especially on my face, my chest, backs of my hands. And of course, I'm mindful to protect myself in other ways too when the sun is strong. You know, retreating to the shade, wearing a hat, covering up with clothes. I've even bought myself an inexpensive UV parasol. And I keep this in my bag in case I get caught in strong sunshine when out and about. You never know in the UK when you might be lucky. But am I wearing SPF every day, all the way through the year, even in the depths of winter in grey, drizzly London for the short amount of time I'm actually outside? Absolutely not. And here's why. Okay, so first of all, let's backtrack and ask the question, why have we been told to wear SPF every day anyway? Of course, sunscreen is very useful for protection against strong UV rays. We absolutely do not want to abuse the sun and burn. And severe burns in childhood are a risk factor for developing melanoma in later life. But a lot of what we hear, especially in terms of our skincare routine, has come from the world of beauty. How many times have we heard Apply SPF as the last part of your beauty regime. And this, regardless of our ethnicity, the time of year, or even the whereabouts on the planet of where we're living. Are you in Edinburgh or are you on the equator? It really isn't a one size fits all. But it is something that we've had ingrained into us with the hope that it will protect our skin from sun damage, prevent pigmentation, reduce premature aging and the appearance of wrinkles. And, you know, it's something that a lot of us have taken on board, me included in the past, without question, really. But especially here in the currently grey UK, are we actually doing more harm than good? Well, a number of experts are now coming forward on this as emerging research seems to think so. So in researching for my new book, I came across a statement from Anthony Young. Now he's the Emeritus Professor of Experimental Photobiology within the Dermatology Department at King's College London. He is one of the most highly regarded mainstream sunlight experts on the planet. Now I actually had a conversation with him a few days ago on this very subject. Writing in the British Journal of Dermatology, in 2025 this year under the heading common false statements on the effects of sun and sunscreens Anthony writes this there is no risk of sunburn in winter at temperate latitudes such as the UK advice to wear sunscreens throughout the year seems to be driven by unfounded concerns about photo aging from UVA however UVA exposure in London on a winter's day is about nine percent of that on a summer's day interesting. Now this is something that's also been echoed by another leading light, excuse the pun, a real authority on the subject here, Professor Brian Diffie. You may know that name if you're in the industry. Now he's the guy who actually invented the UVA star rating sunscreen system for boots a few years ago. So what does he say? about UVA. So writing in the very same journal, he states this. Consider a typical winter day in London. Ambient erythemal, that's basically skin reddening, and UVA exposures are about 3% and 9% respectively of those on a sunny summer's day. And people who spend most of their time indoors receive about 5% of ambient UV on their face, resulting in an erythemal UV exposure equivalent to less than one minute of summer sunbathing, with a corresponding UV value of about two minutes. We need to ask ourselves, therefore, if applying sunscreen in winter is really necessary to reduce even further these trivial biological doses. Love that. That's his word. Trivial biological doses, especially as unnecessary application of sunscreen may not only be detrimental to human health, but also harmful to the aquatic environment. Yeah, let's not forget where those SPF ingredients end up when we wash our face or step into the shower, right? Down the drain, into our water supply, all of them. Interesting stuff, isn't it? And as you know, I'm especially interested in looking at how we can age better 
and improve our overall health and longevity. And the detriment to health is something that I chatted more in depth about on a recent podcast episode with the completely brilliant consultant dermatologist, Dr. Veronique Bataille. And I'll pop the link in the description box below for you to have a listen. Not only is she a great dermatologist, she's peer reviewed, she's well researched, she's published clinical papers. She's considered a leading skin cancer specialist. She's, as I say, published several peer reviewed papers, professional papers on melanoma and more in the medical journals, the mainstream top medical journals. And one of the areas that's of particular interest to Veronique is the skin's microbiome. And she believes that this is being compromised by daily SPF use. She says that she's noticed a rise of conditions in her own clinic, from rosacea to adult acne, which she believes are linked to the overuse of high factor SPF creams and layered skincare. And emerging research seems to support this too, showing that sunscreen ingredients can indeed alter the balance of bacteria that keep our skin resilient. And we're also learning that there's an important skin immune axis where the bacteria and more within the skin talk to our immune cells as an important line of health defense. And we could be risking a lowered immune system if we disrupt this messaging. And then, of course, we don't often hear talk of the benefits of being in the sun, do we? But there are many. Some you might know, such as giving us natural vitamin D, but there are many other significant benefits too. Some of these might be new to you, and I've been digging into this part for my new book research, but I'm gonna share a few pointers with you now, just as a, a taster of a lot more to come. So our skin has built-in light sensor proteins in the skin, such as neuropsin, and these read UV light to help set our body clocks, and that's our circadian rhythm. And what these do is they guide the body's daily hormone release and the DNA repair processes. So the hormone regulation being especially important for women, of course, as we age, perimenopause, menopause and all that. And it's the early morning low level UVA alongside the daytime blue light that actually triggers this hormonal cascade. Another lesser known benefit is that UVA exposure lowers our blood pressure and improves our circulation. And experts think this may be because it triggers nitric oxide to be released from our skin stores. And this is a helpful support for our cardiovascular system. Now you can buy nitric oxide supplements, or you could drink beetroot juice, which is a good source, or of course you could just get some free daylight. And then there's melanin as a skin protector, but also as an energizer. So beyond giving skin its color, melanin helps absorb harmful UV rays and it neutralizes excess free radicals. And emerging research suggests it converts certain light wavelengths into energy for our cells. Now this is a new area of bioscience called biophotolysis. And maybe that's why we so often feel better happier, more energized when we're in the sun. Well, sunlight also communicates with the immune cells in the skin, so calming unnecessary inflammation, which we see in conditions like eczema, which I have, and psoriasis, which is why phototherapy, where the skin is deliberately exposed to strong light waves, is used in clinical dermatology to help heal skin conditions. Yeah, strong light healing the skin. And then when it comes to pigmentation, moderate regular sun exposure actually trains the skin to adapt. And the very processes that deepen skin tone also activate DNA repair, enzymes and antioxidant defences, meaning that light doesn't only cause stress, it also helps the skin fix itself. And most of the damage that we associate with the sun, wrinkles, sunspots, cancers, comes from overexposure and burning, which we definitely need to avoid. It doesn't necessarily come from the steady, balanced light on the skin. So in natural sunlight, UVA is never alone. It comes with red light, with infrared wavelengths, which penetrate much more deeply than UV light to support mitochondrial repair and offset oxidative damage. So the sun provides the remedy and more if we learn to work with it wisely. But of course, the more mainstream and obvious benefit that the sun gives us is, of course, vitamin D. We hear a lot about that. Everybody says we should supplement with it. Well, bare skin, when it meets UVB rays, produces vitamin D, and that helps to support several systems in the body, including our bones and our immune defenses, really important right now, especially. 
But deficiency to this vitamin is now widespread. And yes, supplements can be helpful, of course, especially in the winter. But research suggests they don't actually deliver the same health benefits as natural sunlight. Yeah, remember that we've evolved to produce this vitamin via our skin. So it makes sense that taking an oral supplement may not have quite the same effect. How do we know this? Well, there was a 20 year study of nearly 30,000 Swedish women, so statistically significant. And those who avoided the sun had significantly higher overall death rates even when vitamin D supplementation was factored in, suggesting that sunlight provides vital benefits that go far beyond just vitamin D alone. We're learning that sunlight isn't only about UV and protecting our skin and our health isn't only about using SPF. Sunlight contains a whole spectrum of wavelengths, We've got red, green, blue, and different bands of infrared. And together, these light signals help regulate our circadian rhythm, our hormones, as I mentioned, our immune system, and more. Now, getting natural morning light is especially powerful, setting our internal clock so that energy levels are steadier during the day, and then sleep comes more easily at night because we've helped to produce the melatonin. So what's my approach then? Well, common sense. You know, everyone is different. We all have different skin tones. We live in different places. We experience varying levels of sunshine. What works for me won't necessarily work for you. And we talk a lot about this in the podcast with Veronique. And she did indeed highlight that individuals with very fair skin do need to be careful with strong exposure, sun exposure. But she also believes that daily SPF use in those with darker skin may not have any health benefit and may actually be harmful. You should listen to what she says. So what do you think? Love to hear your thoughts on this one. It's an interesting topic for sure, one that is not gonna be going away anytime soon, especially as more research emerges and is published. Do take a listen to Dr. Bataille's podcast as well. I'll pop the link below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to never miss an update until the next time. Stay well, go well, goodbye.